you want to go to sunny Pomona College in Claremont, California, and I want to help you do it. My name is Craig Meister. You can go to my website, collegemeister.com, to learn more about how you can work with me throughout your college application process. Pomona is the oldest of the Claremont Colleges. It's been around since the 1800s, and in fact, 1887 to be exact. Later on came Scripps in 1926, and then, of course, Claremont McKenna College in 1946. Harvey Mudd came around in 1955. And finally, Pitzer of the five undergraduate colleges in the Claremont College Consortium came around and was born in 1963. But you want to go to Pomona, and I understand why. It's a very prestigious school, and it's a very selective school. So let's jump right in to tip number one. Below this video, there is a link to my classic article, How to Get Into the Ivy League Ethically. I want you to read that article from start to finish, top to bottom, because for all intents and purposes, Pomona College is an Ivy League college in terms of selectivity. In terms of their early decision acceptance rate versus their regular decision acceptance rate spread, we have a school that is down in the single digits for their uh, regular decision acceptance rate. Their early decision acceptance rate is in the teens. So this is not a school that is ever easy to get into. And you're going you're gonna to want to read that article from start to finish so that you understand what you need to do in the not just months, but years leading up to your 12th grade year so that you can walk into your 12th grade year in the strongest position possible to thread the needle and earn admission into Pomona. Uh, it's not just a few month college application process anymore like it may have been many, many, many decades ago. It is now a four year college application process and that article over at admissions.blog, which again is linked below this video, will help you better conceptualize what you can and should be doing throughout your high school career in order to best position yourself for admission to Pomona during your senior year in high school. A uh, little adjunct point I'd like to make as we are currently still in a test optional environment, I would argue that you don't want to send Claire, uh, any Claremont school like Pomona. I mean, I would also probably include Claremont McKenna in this and Harvey Mudd in this, but I'm specifically speaking today about Pomona. I would not want to send Pomona any SAT or ACT scores that are basically 1400 or lower uh, or the equivalent again on the ACT. I'd be leery of that in a test optional environment. Uh, you know, because of the machinations of test optional and how it encourages students with only the strongest scores to send their scores, all the schools have seen their averages sort of stay steady or go up. And therefore, obviously, every individual case is unique. But if you want a generic sort of cutoff point, I would say that if you're scoring 1310 on the SAT, your SAT scores are not going to be a net positive for your application. Whereas if you're scoring 1410 on the SAT, uh, at that point, I think that they are strong enough where you should be proud to send them to a school like Pomona. But again, in every individual case, uh, we have pros and cons, pluses and minuses, and that's why you would want to work with me so I can give you the straight dope, as they say, to tell you whether or not in your unique case, your unique test scores on the SAT or ACT would be a net positive or a net negative for your overall application that you wish to submit to Pomona in order to earn admission to that wonderful liberal arts school in sunny Southern California. My next tip relates to the early decision mention I made a few moments ago. If you are very serious about getting into Pomona, you must consider early decision one or early decision two. Pomona is a school that offers both. One of those deadlines is in November. The other deadline is in January. You usually hear about a month and a half after you apply whether or not you've been admitted to Pomona if you apply through one of those two early decision plans. I will warn you though, early decision means that you are binded to attend Pomona College if you are accepted. That's a big deal. You have to be sure that Pomona is your first choice and you must have discussed with your family and your school counselor that you have no doubts and that as a family you are ready to uh, pay regardless of what uh, Pomona comes back with in terms of their um, aid offer. Obviously, there are always some loopholes that you can use, but you shouldn't assume those loopholes will apply to you if you're going into the process of deciding that you're going to sign on the dotted line and, in fact, apply to Pomona as an early decision applicant. But the reason why it's such a wise decision to consider early decision one or early decision two at Pomona is that 
Statistically speaking, you have a two to three times greater chance of getting into Pomona if your grades and everything else stays the same between, let's say, November and, and January, uh, and you're consistently a strong student and you've done everything I've already mentioned in that article, which was tip number one, you're going to be in a statistically two and a half to three times better chance of getting in ED than you are regular. So why not take advantage of that opportunity if, in fact, it is your first choice school? Uh, as of this particular filming, uh, November 15th is the deadline by which you must apply uh, early decision one, and you will hear by December 15th, and January 8th is the deadline by which you would have to apply early decision two. The same deadline as regular decision, interestingly, but unlike regular decision applicants who will not hear from Pomona until April 1st, early decision two applicants will hear by February 15th. So if you're playing the odds, early decision makes a lot of sense for you as my tip number two. Tip number three, Pomona is a school that you would think because they're a liberal arts institution and they really care about not only the student but also the person that they're accepting, you would think that they would allow you on their supplement to the common application to upload a full-fledged extracurricular resume PDF like a lot of other peer institutions uh, do. Allow Not a lot of other, but considerable others that are very selective schools like Pomona. But in fact, Recently, Pomona has not allowed you to uh, upload a full-fledged PDF resume to its supplement to the common application. That may change in the future, so I can't predict the future, but what I will say is if Pomona continues to not allow you to upload a PDF resume of your extracurricular exploits to, your, to their supplement to the common application, I strongly recommend that you still put together an extracurricular resume that is an unabridged, beautiful document about yourself on a Word or Google document. Uh, make sure you save it. You continually update it throughout your high school career, and the format you should follow, of course, would be the one that I include in my How to Build an Extraordinary Extracurricular Resume short course, which is linked below this video. That is a very short course. It's less than an hour in length, and it will help you learn how to put together a beautiful extracurricular resume, not a professional resume, but an extracurricular resume specifically tailored for your college applications and those college applications that do in fact allow you to upload full-fledged PDF resumes to their supplements. Because Pomona does not allow you to do so, you should still pull from such a document and plug 650 words from that document into what is known as the additional information section of the common applications writing page. This is because the common application gives you the opportunity to share any additional information you think is relevant in that particular spot, which is a field that opens up when you click yes, that you wanna share more information. This is located below the common app essay on the common apps writing page. So it's extremely important that you take advantage of that spare space to further detail the extracurricular activities that you have hopefully been pursuing throughout your high school career in a manner that goes beyond, above and beyond, what you can do on the Common Apps Activities page. The Common App Activity page is extremely skeletal in terms of how much space you have to describe the depth and breadth of what you've achieved. Let's say you have achieved 13 or 14 different unique extracurricular activities. The Common App Activities page only allows you to list 10. So that's no good for you, and you are a high-flying applicant. You want to be able to share details about all 13 activities, let's say. That's why the additional information section of the Common Apps writing page makes a lot of sense for you to plug in information from your unabridged extracurricular resume into that page or into that section so that you will be in the best position to, what I often say, go big or go home. You want to go big. You want to go into Pomona. You don't want to go stay at home. Uh, so go big or go home. Make sure that you don't do the minimum, which would be just completing the Common Apps Activities page. Make sure you do the maximum, which would be finding any spare spot on that application to share additional details about all the ways in which you are an impressive applicant to Pomona College. Now, what if you've only been in eight activities? That's okay. Maybe you have more to say about those eight activities, and that still fits on the Common Apps Activities page. I would still say utilize the additional information section of the Common Apps writing page in order to best sell yourself to the admissions officers who will be reading your college application over at Pomona College. My tip number four goes right into the belly of the beast, known as the supplement to the common application for Pomona College. Pomona has released its 2024 uh, supplemental essay prompts, and who knows how long these will be in use, but they'll at least be in use through the 2023-2024 admission cycle, and these are the prompts in question. 
Pomona specific essay prompts for those applying for fall 2024 include an academic interest statement of 150 words and a short response essay of 150 words and a longer response essay of 250 words. Here is the academic interest statement. What do you love about the subject or subjects you selected as potential major or majors at Pomona? If undecided, share more about your academic passions. This you have 150 words to respond to. And I would strongly encourage that you not just take the space to uh, explain what you love about the subject or subjects you selected, but also leave at least two sentences in this 150 word response in order to show how you would pursue that subject that you love or subjects that you love at Pomona specifically. You can name drop a particular professor you really are excited to study with based off of your research on that professor or the course he or she teaches. You could mention a particular institute or adjunct program that is affiliated with a major that you want to study over at Pomona. So get specific, get in the weeds with only Pomona specific opportunities or maybe in this case Claremont College specific opportunities that you seem really excited for uh, the opportunity to take advantage of. Obviously, you don't want to just name Claremont McKenna specific opportunities. That way, you should be applying to Claremont McKenna, Pitzer, et cetera. You want to ideally have at least one or two Pomona specific ones and maybe throw in a Claremont Consortium one as well for fun. But uh, this is a way that you can really personalize this response in a way that it won't just be generic about you and your love for this subject or subjects. In terms of how I would structure it, I would stru structure it like a miniature essay, a one sentence introduction with a thesis, a several sentence body that supports the thesis with showing detail, and then a conclusion sentence that doesn't just restate the thesis, but actually goes a step beyond the thesis and says something new. As for your next response, you have a short uh, response essay of another 150 words. And for this one, you can choose to respond to one of the following three prompts. Prompt option number one, at Pomona, we celebrate and identify with the number 47. Share with us one of your quirky personal family or community traditions and why you hold on to it. Option number two is what item are you excited to bring with you to college? And option number three is describe a time when you felt empowered or on top of the world. I am including, by the way, all of these below this video in the video description so you can look at them uh, in your spare time and you can brainstorm them without listening to me at the same time later. But what I will say is that regardless of the prompt you choose for this 150 word response, I would encourage you to not only be backward looking, but also again, have at least one or two sentences that are forward looking. What do I mean by that? Let's say you talk about a time when you felt empowered or on top of the world. That's fine. Talk about it, show that specific event, but then at least give one or two sentences maybe as late as the conclusion, but maybe also in the body, where you can connect the dots between how you felt then and how you feel like you will feel at some point in the future, ideally when you're an undergraduate, doing something similar, hopefully, at Pomona. If you choose the one about what item you are excited to bring with you to college, you obviously can tell the backstory and you should tell the backstory of why that item is important to you. But you can and you should also explain how that item will continue to give you strength or be important to you when you are specifically an undergraduate student, not just anywhere, but at Pomona. And then also, if you choose the first one about the number 47, um, and that's, of course, important to Pomona, but you are asked to share with the admissions committee at Pomona uh, one of your quirky personal family or community traditions and why you hold on to it. By all means, explain that tradition. But then you should dovetail into explaining how you will continue to maintain that tradition while you were an undergraduate at Pomona and maybe even beyond. That's another way in which you can connect the dots that you are in it to win it at Pomona specifically. Again, the main focus should still be on what the prompt is asking you for, but you can and you should always move a little bit beyond the past and into the present and the future so that you can show Pomona is also a really big part of your plans. And then finally, you have one 250 word response that you must also complete for Pomona College, and you can choose to respond to one of the following three prompts for this particular uh, last 250 word essay. In the past few years, is there something you have changed your mind about and why? That's option number one. Re option number two is reflecting on a community that you are a part of. What values or perspectives from that community would you bring to Pomona? 
And then finally, option three is what strength or quality do you have that most people might not see or recognize? I love all of these prompts. It's going to be really hard for you to choose most likely because I think they're all open-ended enough where you can feel comfortable getting more detail about yourself that you have not shared anywhere else in the application into your response to one of these two, three questions. Uh, if you choose in the past few years, is there something you have changed your mind about? Why? That's a really great opportunity for those students who have had sort of an epiphany or light bulb moment in recent years about a particular topic, whether it be a political topic or a personal topic or anything in between, uh, where they've, they've had a change of heart or a change of mind in this particular case. Uh, you want to show that event and you want to also make sure it's balanced by not just showing you changing your mind, but also leaving space for explaining why you changed your mind. And again, ideally, you at least have one or two sentences to explain how you see yourself continuing to engage with that particular uh, idea or topic or, you know, as you are an undergraduate at Pomona, if you opt for that one. In terms of reflecting on a community that you're a part of, what values or perspectives from that community would you bring to Pomona? Again, you need to balance between showing the past and how you've been a part of that community integrally, hopefully, in the past, but also showing how you will continue to grow within that community and thrive within that community and bring the values that you've learned from that community or your experiences within that community and harness them into your experiences enriching the lives of others at Pomona. And then if you choose a strength or quality that most people might not see or recognize in you when they first get to know you, uh, again, you have a great opportunity to explain sort of what lurks be below the surface uh, in terms of, of your personality or your value system or quality. But then again, why not take this opportunity to show how that will play out as an undergraduate, specifically at Pomona by sharing a Pomona anecdote or two and how you see yourself again integrating with and engaging with that particular opportunity that exists on Pomona's campus. What a great way to sort of prove that there is an amazing fit between you and Pomona and Pomona and you in terms of how you integrate your response to that particular prompt if you ch so choose to do it. For any of those 250 word responses, make sure, make absolutely sure that you are structuring it like a traditional essay, a several sentence intro, a body paragraph, and then a sentence or two conclusion. You want to make sure you have a thesis in your introduction and that in the body you're showing proof that that thesis is true. Okay, you're going to prove your thesis in your body. And then the conclusion again should say something new and thoughtful and intriguing that leaves them just wanting more of you, not wanting less of you. And make sure that you're not just restating your intro or thesis in new words, but you're actually again dropping a new idea that is going to leave them impressed with you. Even if that new idea is simply, thank you so much for taking the time to read my application. If that's all you're left with, that's all you're left with. But hopefully you have some more to say about the topic that you choose because you chose it out of the three options that were available to you. I should also mention my next tip, which is Pomona does allow you to request interviews. Uh, they're not guaranteed. Uh, but if you want to interview at Pomona, by all means, go for it. If you engage in an interview at Pomona, as of last check, Pomona's interviews are in fact evaluative in the sense that the member of the alumni committee who interviews you does in fact write a write-up of your interaction with that interviewer and they send it over into uh, the Pomona's admissions office for inclusion into your admissions file. So if you do engage in an interview, just know that it could definitely augment your application, most likely positively. They of course do stay at Pomona as a disclaimer that there is no negative of not applying, and in fact, only a small percentage, not, not, not applying, but of interviewing, there is no negative of not interviewing in the sense that they accept plenty of students who do not interview. But I'm a big believer in, as I often say, go big or go home. If you have the opportunity to interview, if you have the bandwidth to email them or call them and ask for an interview, do it. And you could be given the opportunity to interview with a member of the Pomona community, either a current employee or an alum, and this, again, is a great opportunity to further differentiate your application. So do not be shy. Do not be scared of the opportunity to interview. I would, I would jump at that and grab onto it and make sure you make the most of it. Below this video, there are some extra tips about how to make the most of an interview and how not to have any faux pas that is a serious no-no on an interview. I will also state that even though it was not the subject of this particular video, that Obviously, Pomona is going to be looking at your common application essay. That's a whole other topic for a whole other day, and I've done it. So below this video, I'm including some bonus links to videos I've done in the past about the common app essay in particular. 
Do note that if you're an international student, they're going to want to know your IELTS, your TOEFL, or your DET debt score, Duolingo test score. So you got to prove your English proficiency if you're from out of the country and you've attended a school where the primary language of instruction is not English. So keep that in mind. Otherwise, I wish you a very best of luck as you fight like heck to get into the very esteemed institution known as Pomona College. Again, if you want one-on-one -on -one personalized guidance throughout your college admissions and application processes, visit my website at collegemeister.com. Otherwise, simply like this video if you enjoyed it and watch to the end. And also, please subscribe to my channel and tell your friends and family about my channel. It always helps me out a lot, and I really do appreciate it. Until next time, stay safe and stay well. And again, I wish you the very best of luck on your application to Pomona College.